Hello everyone. Today I'm here to explain to you the principle behind my centrifugal propeller. Now if you don't know what a centrifugal propeller is, uh, please check out my first two videos, Pendulum Test of a Centrifugal Propeller and uh, Centrifugal Propeller 1.8. Now the reason I'm explaining this is because most physicists don't believe that what I've done is possible because it goes against Newton's third law, which is for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Well, I'm about to prove them wrong. And this, demonst this uh, description uh, is of the principle behind the centrifugal propeller. This isn't the actual operation of it. Uh, and I'll explain that a little bit later. So anyway, let's get into it. Let's say we have this box, and in the box we have two cannons. And each one of these cannons fires bean bags. I choose bean bags for this uh, demonstration because uh, bean bags don't bounce. So anyway, these these two cannons are on rails. This one will roll off to the right, and this one will roll off to the left uh, as they recoil after they fire. So the two cannons fire at the same time, and the bean bags hit the wall. Oh, and there's a chain connecting the two cannons. So when this one is here and this one is here, the chain is tight. Okay, so we fire these two cannons at the same time and the bean bags hit the wall. The cannons recoil back along the rails. This one comes to here, this one goes to there, until they hit the end of the chain. When they hit the end of the chain, it, they stop because the reaction is absorbed in the chain. Now, not all of the reaction is absorbed in the chain, but the majority of it is. A certain amount of the reaction is absorbed as they go around the curve of this rail which is attached to the box. And on this side as well. But the majority of the reaction is absorbed this way and this way in the chain. So you therefore have more force on this wall than you do on this wall, causing this box to move in that direction. Now, let's pretend for a minute that this box is in space and for argument's sake these, can these uh, cannonballs of, of bean bags are traveling at uh, let's say a thousand miles an hour, just for argument's sake. Inside the box. And when they hit the wall, they cause this whole box to move forward in this direction at 100 miles an hour. Now you roll the cannons back to their original position, reload them, and fire them again. Inside the box, those bean bags are still traveling at a thousand miles an hour. But because the whole box is already moving ahead at a hundred miles an hour, they're now traveling in relation to outside the box, they're now traveling at 1100 miles an hour. So each time you move these cannons back and fire them, this box will go faster and faster and faster. So you will continually accelerate. Now of course if we accelerate at 32 feet per second squared you will be able to stand on this wall. Then when you get halfway to your destination you turn the whole box around 
so that the cannons are now firing in that direction and you reload them, start firing them again and you start to decelerate. So then what happens is you have gravity on this wall, still this wall, but now it's moving in this direction instead of that direction and you're decelerating. So like when you put your brakes on in your car, you're thrown forward, the same thing happens here. You're, so you still have gravity on this wall. The, the, the only time that you don't have gravity is when you're flipping it around. So you're continually accelerating and then flip it around and then you're continually decelerating. So you always have gravity in your spacecraft except for that little time when you flip it around. So you virtually uh, eliminate uh, most problems associated with zero gravity in space travel. Now the neat thing about that is that at 32 feet per second squared, which is one, one g, one gravity, one force of gravity, you can reach Mars from Earth, depending on where Earth and Mars are in their orbit, between 39 to 54 hours. Hours. So a healthy person can take two and a half to three g, a two and a half to three g, you can get to Mars in less than a day using this if it continually accelerates. Now, my centrifugal propeller uses this principle, but instead of the firing and then reloading and firing and reloading, the centrifugal propeller is always spinning and it creates thrust at a right angle to the plane of the centrifuge. So you have continual acceleration and when you flip it around you have continual deceleration. So um, I guess that's it. I hope you, uh, I hope you like this explanation. I hope you like my video. If you like it, please, uh, please like, uh, share and subscribe and uh, put comments down below. Um, I'd love to hear uh, anybody's arguments on this. In fact, I'm prepared to uh, argue this with anybody on the planet. And uh, I look forward to uh, putting out my next video, which is uh, going to be uh, with regard to my equations and uh, how uh, we'll be able to have kind of an inertial dampener uh, in our spacecraft due to um, a large enough magnetic field. Anyway, I'll explain that in my next video. See you then.